Good evening, Reed Spring community. I wanted to take just a couple minutes to update you on tonight's post board meeting video. We just wrapped up our January board meeting. We had a great evening and enjoyed being with our Board of Education and all their support and hard work on behalf of our students. We reviewed the strategic plan and belief that we believe the basic human needs must be met to maximize learning. Um, there are comments tonight in regards to all the work that's being done in our district and the community to support student well-being um, as teachers and staff and community members are tapped into the needs of our students during this unprecedented time. We uh, value so much the work that's being done as well as appreciate um, the Board of Education and their support in approving some positions that address the needs of our, our students, uh, specifically our social worker positions, our reset room positions, and other academic positions. We appreciate all that. I wanted to inform the, the community that as we continue to refine and improve in our practice and consult with legal counsel, uh, we, you will no longer see in the minutes of the board meeting, you'll no longer see employment of personnel and res resignation of personnel. Those items are to be done per um, legal advice from legal counsel. They are to be done in closed session. The reason for that is to protect the confidentiality of our employees. Um, I know our PR group and our administrators do what they can, do all they can to highlight our new staff or recognize those individuals, but we will be taking care of all in terms of the board business, all the resignations and employment, anything related to personnel matters will be dealt under the statute um, that allows that to be done in closed session. So we wanted to put that out there. We know that's a change. Um, we appreciate having attorneys that make sure that we're aligned to good practices. And if you, if you notice that they're not posted in our consent agenda or in our board minutes, that's the reason why. So we wanted to make sure you had that information. Um, regarding future dates, uh, March 3rd, Thursday, March 3rd will be our Golden Friends Luncheon. We look forward to visiting with all of our Golden Friends at that event. And March 24th, we'll be hosting the uh, Table Rock Chamber Luncheon here in the Reed Springs School District. Both of those events will be a great opportunity to hear about our building projects and our no tax increase bond issue that will be coming on the ballot here in April. So uh, we're excited about those events. Janu or February will also celebrate Board Recognition, Recognition Month for all their dedication and hard work and service that they give to our school and our students. Um, we recapped, as far as my report goes, um, the board, um, I, we discussed our current enrollment. We're up about 82 students. Um, our enrollment has increased about 82 students from this time last year, uh, around 60 ish students from the year before. So we're seeing a little bit of an increase. We do have some homeschool students that those numbers have increased from 89 two years ago to 131. Uh, we uh, attribute that specifically to COVID and the impact that that has had, but our enrollment has gone up. Our attendance for our first semester was sitting around 92%. We felt like that's a pretty good attendance number considering everything we're dealing with. Um, it's actually better attendance than we've had last year, so we're feeling really positive about that. We are, as we discussed in our board meeting, we are um, tapped into the, um, we are monitoring our attendance on a daily basis because of COVID and the impact that it has. Obviously, a spike has hit our community with increased cases. Um, our student attendance as of last week was at around 85%, which we felt like was good considering that we did have some students out. Um, what we're really monitoring is our staff attendance. We're doing everything, and we're going to do everything in our power to keep students in school. We understand the negative impact that virtual learning and being at home causes on students and the burden it places on families. So as long as we can staff our school buildings and we can do that in a safe manner, we'll continue to keep school districts our school district open. I let the board know, also know that um, although they may see some other districts around like Springfield that closes down for a week, um, it's because it's, it's because of uh, absenteeism of their staff and not being able to have substitutes. And so right now we've been able to maintain and it has been challenging. Our teachers and our pairs of support staff have all had to do extra to keep kids in school. That means sometimes getting up plan time, sometimes um, giving up their day work that they're normally tapped into and having to go, go cover classrooms. And so I just want our staff to know and for the community to know, first our staff to know how much we appreciate all the extended work they're doing, going above and beyond, and let our community know that that our teachers and our employees are going through so much hard work for, for um, our students to keep schools open. And so if you know of a teacher, an educator, a parent, or some other staff member of the district, please let them know that you value them and you appreciate all their hard work. Um, they truly are amazing. 
We updated, we have two board members that are filed for the election. We have two seats open. Um, Kim Steed and Perry Phillips are both on the election ballot. There will be an election because we're running a note uh, that bond issue, uh, but they're the only individuals still in filing for those two open seats. We also had uh, some surprising news that I'm trying to absorb um, because uh, Jolene Powell has resigned from the board. Um, Jolene has been a phenomenal board member, a significant support to me as a superintendent, a significant support to our school district and an advocate for our kids. Um, has dedicated a, a, a bunch of her life to serving our students. Um, she has some other past and some awesome things going on in her life, so she needed to resign from the Board of Education. The board will have a meeting Tuesday morning at 7.30. It will be um, here, we'll have it here in um, the central office at our boardroom, where they'll discuss the process and outline the next steps. Per state statute and board policy, because of a resignation, the board is allowed to appoint the next person to fulfill the next year of service. Um, because election filing has already closed, whoever is appointed to fill that vacant seat will serve on the board until April 23. Afterwards, that vacant seat will be up and will be up open for re-election. And then whoever fills that seat will fill a one-year term to fulfill that spot. And then we'll have to run for re-election again. And so the board will have a process outlined, which will include um, posting, opening up, communicating to patrons as we're doing today in other formats, letting them know that the vacant position is open. The board can solicit and take applications or uh, names of individuals who would be interested in running for the board. The board will get to interview those candidates, and ultimately the board gets to determine who they seat in those positions, who they select in that, that open position. Our timeline for that is board meeting on Tuesday just to certify the resignation and get the ball rolling, and then um, to ultimately have the interview, open interviews in a regular board session in February and finalize it, hopefully at that point. Um, so wanted to get that information out. We talked about strategic plan work and the building projects. Great work is being done across the district on a variety of levels from academic to student support and our building projects. Um, really tremendously proud of the work that's being done with visible learning. We're taking it very slow in terms of those quali high quality research-based practices to improve student learning. And so um, we're, we discussed that tonight. We also talked about our building projects. I'm looking forward to, on February 22nd, kicking off our campaign for our no tax increase bond issue and really highlighting to community in a variety of forums. Um, I have meetings already set up like I did last year at various, various churches and organizations, as well as we'll have meetings hosted here and videos that we'll post that will give you all the information and details regarding the upcoming bond issue, no tax increase bond issue in April. And so we'll be looking forward to discussing that in length. Excited to announce that the Crane School District Board of Education and the Department of Education has approved um, Crane School District students to now come to Reed Spring Gibson Technical Center to uh, receive their career education. They had been going to Scott's, uh, Scott Technical Center in Monette, and now they have elected to use us as their technical center. Um, so we're excited about having them and joining us next year. Um, we did talk about COVID leave. This was an item from our HR committee that the, they wanted the board to discuss regarding COVID leave, whether or not that is something that we should reinstate. As many of you recall, a couple years ago, or during the pandemic, initial part of the pandemic, there was an order that required or allowed um, per the order for the law that was passed or, or the order that was passed to provide additional COVID leave for employees. So it was requested that we explore that again by our staff. Um, as we discussed that tonight, um, we wanted to first let our staff know that we hear you, the Board of Education hears you. We understand the impact that COVID has on leave time when you have to care for your own loved ones. We understand the impact that has, especially on new employees who don't have a lot of hours. Um, or days of leave. Um, we are grateful that the board has provided PTO, paid time leave, rather than sick and personal, so those combined leave days can really be utilized. And as the, as the district moved to a four-day school week, the board elected not to reduce the number of leave days. And so the district employees have um, what uh, you can get through a week on four days, so that, that does stretch out those leave days quite a bit. Also, um, the, the biggest concern that we have uh, in regards to that uh, request is that we have, um, we're at a point because it's not a federal mandate, we're not even under a really an emergency order in our state. Um, if 
there's some concern that if we were to provide that only for COVID patients, COVID uh, illnesses, but what about the employees that are dealing with cancer or other illnesses? Um, can we be providing it to both, of, or can we select just one group and not provide it to another group? And we feel like that's a pretty risky move to do, as well as we've provided a lot of good leave experiences for our staff. So the board is really concerned that they don't want our staff to feel like they're insensitive to what's going on. They've tried as a board to show good salary increases, good count school calendars and those types of things, but feel like due to the fact that we, they cannot provide additional leave in all health related cases that it doesn't make sense to do that in this situation at this point in time. Uh, but we'll continue to monitor that if things change at the, at the federal government level that we can change that, then we will. But at this point, we wanna make sure we're not discriminating against any employee group. Uh, Perry Phillips recognized several great things from our students throughout the, the last month, so he highlighted those. Our Career Center, uh, Gibson Technical Center, will be um, partnering with the Department of Education in a matching enhancement grant, which will allow us to purchase um, a forklift, a new forklift and a flatbed um, car trailer, um, which our contribution is only 9,000 for uh, $37,000, $38,000 uh, two pieces of equipment. So a really great plan there. Um, as I continue to evaluate the budget and looking at revenues that have come in from um, our tax taxes, which they're delayed and we haven't quite received all those revenues dollars yet to be able to evaluate the budget for going into next year. The board approved and authorized me pending our budget. If I feel like our budget is adequate to cover the positions, they, they've authorized me uh, the ability to go ahead and move forward with the following positions um, to add an additional two staff certified teaching positions to cover one will be placed at the high school, one will be placed at the middle school. They will become our reset room teachers for those two buildings. We will follow a similar model. It may look a little bit different, but similar to what we've done at the preschool, at the primary school, the elementary school, and the intermediate school. Um, we have also approved, pending the budget, potentially adding a high school um, slash career center science position. Um, this would a position we would see would be a kind of a project leads away engineering theme position that would transition from this building over to the career center, but would help alleviate some of the burden that's been placed on our science teachers. Um, and so if, if all is well, we will go ahead and move forward with that position if the dollars are, are as I evaluate those dollars. Um, and then the final two positions that we already posted internally um, are two intervention teaching positions. We are experiencing an unprecedented number of students who have fallen behind due to quarantine and being out of school. Uh, COVID has had a really significant impact there. Our interventionists in our elementary and primary school are phenomenal women who are doing exceptional work, but they are taxed and we know it and we see it. Um, and so we already gave authorization. These are positions that we will fill immediately. Um, we will hire for and, and fill as soon as possible. Um, well, we'll start next school year, but we're, we're gonna, uh, a higher fill those two intervention positions that will be at the elementary school um, so kind of working through the dynamics of how that work out those two positions that will be ESSER funded positions to support our students um, so we appreciate the Board of Education and giving us a latitude to fill some critical positions those other positions that I mentioned I failed to say this are positions that are outlined in the strategic plan um, we are evaluating our substitute pay our substitute situation as we look at COVID numbers, we're talking to our administrators every day. Every day I'm looking at absenteeisms from our staff related to COVID and related to other illnesses and our sub situation. Um, so we will continue to evaluate our compensation to make sure that we're recruiting and bringing more subs in. If you are a substitute, we appreciate you, we value you. If you know someone who would like to sub, we'd be great. We greatly appreciate that. If you're a business who would like to partner in some way to give us some of your employees to to use on a part-time basis. We love that. I know some, some cities have done some interesting, unique things with businesses and getting them involved with schools to cover classrooms. Um, but the board has really made a, a, an effort to support some movement in there. So we're gonna be evaluating that. That was our meeting for tonight. We appreciate all that you do at home, all that you do in the classroom, all that you do on all of our extracurricular activities. There's no greater place in the state of Missouri to be an educator, to work, to have our students attend in the Reese Spring School District. Thank everyone and have a great evening.